now I will talk about a topic um, which has become kind of my favorite and which is also for a surgeon a forbidden topic. I should be standing here talking about bone augmentation, how predictable they are and how great it is to do them. But sometimes from the patient perspective, you ask yourself, is this really necessary, what we all do? And um, that's why I also like to talk about reduced implant dimension, because I think we have to keep up the time and, and discuss these issues. So implant length we will start with. You know that I always have two eyes. One is my clinical eye and one is my scientific eye, and we want to bring them both together. Um, we also discuss things on, on implant design. And then we'll switch to the implant diameter. There was the ITI consensus conference. I will repeat shortly. You will have an update on rock solid. Uh, I will not go to the basics, but there has been some recent stuff there. Um, and then we will also talk on implant design. Again, with the implant dimensions, there has been an evolution. Not only if we look at this system that this is no longer a recent system, but if you look at the picture, you di directly see that this has to be dated back to the 90s. So you ask yourself, do we need this middle implant? Do this implant needs to be inverted that deep? Um, a lot of questions around these, and you see how things change. And of course, there have been some case reports from people where we did short implants even 10 years ago, which are still working. Of course, these case reports don't mean too much, but from the patient's point of view, they do. On the other hand, we have learned that these large implants, and still some dentists are using these extensive uh, implants, when they got infected, they lead to large bony resorptions. The bone defects are really critical. So it's not always the, the larger, the better. 